The first thing after the president announces a Supreme Court justice nominee is the vetting process by the Senate Judiciary Committee. They'll look into the nominee's record and personal background. The committee will then hold public hearings that can last several days. You'll see these televised. This is the most important part of the process when it comes to us, the American people, being able to see um, the next uh, potential Supreme Court justice. 13 News Now political analyst Quentin Kidd. It is in Judiciary Committee hearings where the nomination of Robert Bork fell apart in the early 80s, where the... Um, the accusations made against Clarence Thomas came to light. It's where the um, the uh, accusations against Judge Kavanaugh came to light um, only, what, now two years ago. Then comes the committee vote. This isn't the vote that appoints the nominee. It's a vote to endorse and recommend them to the full Senate. Now, if the committee is deadlocked, a nomination can still move forward without an endorsement. And it's now in the hands of the full Senate. After debate, they'll vote, and a simple majority will confirm the nomination. If there's a tie, the vice president casts the deciding vote. According to the Congressional Research Service, the average amount of time for the whole process is 67 days. Speeding it up would, would make it more political than it even is. It is a political decision, but that would inject a level of politics into it that I think um, nobody really wants to see at the Supreme Court. But, you know, inevitably, that's, you know, that's just where we are. And Kid tells me, hey, this is important. They don't technically have to appoint a ninth justice to fill the vacant spot left by Ginsburg. There isn't a requirement laid out in the Constitution that specifies a certain number of justices have to be on the Supreme Court.